Hey, what's happening? You're hanging out with your man, Tall Boy, and you're watching Black Tree TV. I have the man, Mr. Stephen A. Smith. How you doing, sir? I'm doing all right. What's going on, my man? Man, I'm well. First, can you tell me what the Hoodie Awards means to you? Well, I mean, I think anytime you have an opportunity to celebrate what's going on in our community, I think it's extremely important. We certainly see enough bad news disseminated through mass media about what's going on in the black community. And you got a lot of people that are doing a lot of great things, not just for themselves, not just for their families, uh, but for the community. And this awards, uh, this awards weekend is really about that. It's about celebrating the community and recognizing them just as much as they recognize us and making sure that folks understand that you don't have to be an artist, you don't have to be uh, you know, an actor or an actress, you don't have to be on television or radio. Uh, to be contributing tremendously to the community. And I think it's, I'm real proud of Steve Harvey and their whole morning show crew and Premier Radio and everybody affiliated with this for doing something like this because I think it's a beautiful thing. All right. Now, do you do anything in the community in regards to uh, giving back? Well, I always do. First of all, I give my money. Uh, secondly, I give my time. Um, I show up to things like this. Um, I make sure that, you know, I march from, from city to city. I speak at a lot of high schools. I speak at a lot of uh, universities. Um, I speak at a lot of community organizations, things of that nature, because um, obviously I'm a messenger. I'm a communicator. That appears to be my gift, um, and that's the way that I give back. So I try to go back and talk to the young kids out there and to let them know that there's a hardcore world waiting out there for them. It's not going to be easy. Nobody's going to give them anything, and they've got to be ready to work and face the challenges. And I want of those people that believe strongly, uh, especially as it pertains to black people, that as long as you know the truth, you have the intestinal fortitude to get through anything. It's when you when you feel defeated, it's usually because of the lies. It's usually because of the proverbial glass ceiling. It's usually because something lying behind that curtain that you can't see, that you can't fight. That's not considered a meritocracy that our youth has a problem with. But when you let them know the truth and what that is and the battles that are awaiting them, um, I think that when you do that, you arm them significantly with the challenges that lie ahead. And that's the role that I like to play. Let's talk sports for a quick second. Sure. Michael Vick just came on to Philadelphia. You're from Philadelphia. Can you tell me your thoughts and do you think it's well, a dead? First of all, I'm from New York City. I worked in Philadelphia for 13 years. Everybody think I'm from Philadelphia. I'm from New York City. But I will say this. Um, it's a beautiful thing that Michael Vick um, has gotten a second chance. I'm one of those people who believes he deserved to be put in jail. I mean, you can't do what he did, yeah, but, but he did his time. And you serve 18 months in a federal penitentiary. You, turn, you serve 23 months in prison. I don't want to hear about how you owe any debt to society. You owe no one anything. You paid your debt. It's done. Again, he deserved to go to jail because you can't do what he did. And, and unfortunately, he committed that felony and he had to pay a price for it. But that doesn't mean he should be condemned for life. He made a mistake. He paid his debt. Let him come back and let him play football. I also think it's important to commend Donovan McNabb because Donovan McNabb lobbied the Philadelphia Eagles to give this guy a second chance. It'd be one thing if this guy were a running back, wide receiver, etc. This is a quarterback, one that may very well be fighting for Donovan McNabb's job in a year or so. Yet Donovan stood up and said, we need this guy to help make our team better, and more importantly, he deserves a second chance. Him and the Philadelphia Eagles organization did a tremendous, tremendous thing by giving Michael Vick that second chance, and I think Michael Vick is going to to make the most of it because I think he learned from his mistakes and he deserves to live his life. Do you think there's a double standard um, with uh, guys like Dante Starworth and the Michael Vick situation? No, I don't think it's a double standard. Dante Starworth served 24 months in jail after being sentenced to 30 days in jail. He should not have gotten behind the wheel of a car under the influence. But the bottom line is, is that it was a mistake because the guy that he hit was on the highway. You understand? There was nothing intentional about that. It was an accident that happened. Unfortunately, it was a fatal accident. And because of that, he had to pay a price. 24 days in jail and then being suspended for the season without pay, I think it's justified considering the fact that a man is dead and he's not in jail for more than 24 days. I think it's justified that he's out of work for a year. All right, he'll be back at work next year. He'll make his money. He'll go from there. In the case of Vic, uh, Michael Vick, I definitely think that's an entirely different situation because Michael Vick's acts were intentional. He knew that he was funding a dogfighting operation. He knew that it was a felony. He knew that it was against the law and he tried to keep it from the law. So they busted him and he had to pay a price for that. One's an accident, one's intentional.